Welcome to a video tutorial on the acid-base chemistry of carboxylic acids and um, especially linking it to water solubility. Let's get started. Alrighty, so carboxylic acids, as the name would imply, can lose a proton to form carboxylates. So we'll just write a generic carboxylic acid here because the, the hydrocarbon backbone has no influence on the acidity of this proton. Um, now these are weak acids, so I will show an equilibrium arrow. And so this is our carboxylate and our proton. Right? So there's quite a bit of language happening here. Let's make sure we're all together. So here's our carboxylic acid. And recognizing that if we had the hydrocarbon chain, there'd be a bunch of hydrogens here, but this is the acidic proton. And so that would be described here, right? H plus is also called a proton. And then the resulting anion we describe as a carboxylate. Okay, so a brief review of um, why do we call H plus a proton? Right? So let's think about a neutral hydrogen atom. If we had a neutral hydrogen atom, it has one proton, and then the mass number is one as well. Right? So this is our Z, our atomic number, our number of protons, and this is A, our mass number, which is protons plus neutrons, and so we see that there are zero neutrons. And of course, we have, if we have one proton and it's neutral, there's that one electron floating around. So let's look at what, what's the atomic structure of a hydrogen ion. Notice that the only subatomic particles present in the neutral atom were one proton and one electron. But when we formed the hydrogen ion, we lost the one electron. So the only subatomic particles present are one proton. All right. So as we um, explore acid-base chemistry more, the concept of a proton being the hydrogen ion will show up again and again. Linguistically, when we're talking about the carboxylate ions, it's really as simple as replacing the ic acid with eight. So, for example, if we had a very um, common oops, carboxylic acid, this would be acetic acid, and then we would look at this carboxylate, that would be acetate. So we see here that the ic acid was replaced with eight. So you already know how to name carboxylic acids, so you'll always be able to name the carboxylate. Let's practice that first before we get into the deeper into the chemistry. So here I have shown you two important carboxylic acids that we'll see as we study biochemistry, um, pyruvic acid and lactic acid. However, inside the body, they will be um, in their carboxylate form. So let's go ahead and draw the skeletal line structure and name the resulting carboxylate. So looking at the structure here, I showed all the hydrogens to help you practice and emphasize that these are the acidic hydrogens. So now if we draw this as the carboxylate, this was our carbon here, and then we had the ketone, and so this would be the bond line structure for pyruvate, which we'll learn more about, particularly when we look at glycolysis, the breakdown of sugars in the future. And then here's lactic acid, and so we will show the carboxylate there as well. And this time we also have three carbons, but here we had an alcohol group instead of a ketone. So if this is called lactic acid, 
then the carboxylate would be referred to as lactase. All right, so there's a little practice there with the language. And then um, let's look at another example of carboxylates that um, we run into all the time. Carboxylates can form water-soluble salts with sodium and potassium ions. And so here's an example. We have potassium propanoate. So we recognize potassium as an alkali metal. It will always be in the positive state. And then propanoate, there's our three carbon. So we'll put, and then there's the O8. So we know there's a carboxylate. And then that would be three carbons, one, two, three. So that would be the skeletal line structure for potassium propanoate. All righty. So now that we understand the language to describe the acid-base chemistry of carboxylic acids, let's practice doing some um, reactions here. And these are pretty useful. And they're also a good example of the power of charge. Okay, so let's get this properly centered. Great. Okay. So let's draw the skeletal line structure for steric acid. So here's our carboxylic acid. And notice this is going to be a fatty acid. We have a 16 carbon chain. Well, really, it's a 17 carbon chain. So the first carbon is here at carbon 1. This would be carbon 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then we'd have the methyl group at the end. So here is the bond line structure for steric acid. We would describe this as an example of a fatty acid. All right? So would we expect steric acid to be water soluble? No, right? The hydrocarbon tail um, is too long. Right? Remember our 4 to 6 rule. If we have a polar functional group, it can help four to six nonpolar carbons to be water soluble. But once we have 17 carbons, it's much too long. But here's the interesting part. Now let's draw the skeletal line structure for sodium stearate, right? So we recognize that as the carboxylate. So this hydrocarbon part is gonna be the same And now we'll have our carboxylate. And in this example, we have a sodium counter ion. Now, would you expect the carboxylate salt to be water soluble? Amazingly, yes, it is. Why, right? Because of the charge on the carboxylate group, right? Because of the full, right, negative charge on the carboxylate. And so um, carboxylate salts, especially from fatty acids, all of us benefit from those because um, they are soaps. So soaps are water-soluble carboxylate salts. Um, so here we have a, a, a diagram representing. So here's the polar head and then the nonpolar tail. So this polar head, this is going to be hydrophilic. And enough that it creates the water solubility. So how do soaps get us clean? Well, there still is this nonpolar greasy tail, so to speak. And so let's say that we have a greasy stain in, on our clothes. The nonpolar um, hydrophobic tails want to interact with the grease, right, via the London force. But the polar heads all want to interact with the water. 
so then what happens is, right, so the nonpolar tails, this is what lifts the grease, right, this interacts with the stain. And so we rub in the soap, allowing the hydrophobic tails to interact. And then, as we rinse away with the water, the polar heads interact with the water and pull away the grease. So all of our cleaning of soap, the underlying force in that is intermolecular forces. And then if you're wondering about soap scum, remember that um, with carboxylate salts, that they're soluble with sodium or potassium ions. But in hard water, ions like calcium, magnesium, or iron they form insoluble carboxylate salts. And so if we were to write the phases, right, the sodium salt would be AQ. It would dissolve in water, but the calcium salt would be a solid, right? And that solid is what we view as soap scum. If you're wondering about the, the ratio here, of course, if we have a minus one charge and a plus two cation, we will need two of our anions to create the neutral soap scum. All righty. So there is an overview of the um, acid-base chemistry of carboxylic acids and really directly how it applies to water solubility. So please take some time now to work a few homework questions to reinforce your understanding.